Good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well today. Coming at you with the next excerpt of my first novel in a series, Black and White Odyssey of Eden, continuing where I left off last time. So let's go ahead and have right at this. Thomas scurried out of the chamber and loudly whispered uh, to the scientist from the threshold. It did indeed work, James, he said desperately. It made it, made it all the way there. The scientist still completely stunned and shaking from his experiences, was stirred from his stupor at these words. He had dared not check, for him, uh, check his work for himself, petrified that his uh, heart may yet be prematurely broken. What? he said hazily. Come, Thomas said demandingly, his tone nevertheless deceiving an air of respect and cheeriness. The dark, uh, dark aura with inexplicable origin dissipated slightly, though the technicians all remained awe-stricken. What had just happened was ubiquitous thought flooding through their minds. Despite himself, this included the scientist. I am, the scientist said, turning toward Thomas. He walked back to the chamber leery of what he may now find within. How much more experience did he now have to the truth of unrequited optimism, he thought to himself. Hope, he knew, was a fickle and fleeting thing. Thomas, despite uh, his status, despite how long he had known and trusted the scientist, could clear-cut away his fortress of apathy and it had a way of defending the scientist from false positives. Was it apathy? No, not that. It was a realistic contentment that he was paving a futile path, if for nothing else but to give him something to do. Other than die, other than give up. He knew it, but one more blow would only mute his emotions that much further. There was a mission here, or there. He swore by it, but he did not remember what it was. Dragging his feet across the ground, he stumbled through the threshold. The scene Thomas had pulled up, now in view, contrasted against the pitch-black room. Thomas had converted the visuals to that of a porthole, perhaps in an effort to alleviate deep shock from overtaking the scientist. Alas, once more... Thomas was proving an excellent emotional dampener for the scientist. The scientist, for his part, positively refused to look for the conclusion himself, lest he succumb to the possible insanity of yet another failure. He always got back up, but what a blow it would be. Thomas accepted this responsibility of being his aegis. In their history... This was one of the many roles that Thomas fulfilled unblinkingly. What is this? said the scientist. At what am I looking? James, Thomas said flatly, eyes blazing. This is Jared's future. How far temporally dislocated? The scientist inquired hesitantly. Thomas's tone became yet more intense as he looked sideways at the scientist, while his towering, towering figure hunched over the console. James, all the way. The scientist's breathing became shallow and rapid, the pupils of his wide, void-like eyes dilating. Every muscle of his body tensed and trembled violently as he clenched his teeth. Another tortured bellow escaped from his mouth. Yes! Don't fool me, Thomas. Don't break my soul yet further. I demand you show me. Both their hearts raced and raced in anticipation. All the factors are in place, James. This is at the Great Divide. It's of the same frame of reference. While Thomas became anxious with excitement at what he knew to be true, <clears throat> he remained focused and determined. The scientist beamed at Thomas, in what was becoming a fashion that required words less and less. Thomas knew what he wanted him to do, and he did, with, uh, did it without hesitation. 
All right, that's it for this section, guys. I will come uh, at you with the next one later. Love y'all. Peace.